How's it going YouTube? Coming to you today with another video. And today, guys, what the brain do is going to be the meta breakdown for Phantom Nightmare. I miss you all. Welcome back. I'm back. I needed some time to myself, which is really important. I really hope that everyone focuses on some self-care this year. That should be everyone's resolution for the year, is really making sure that we're just making sure that we're good. And, uh, you know, it's really important to kind of take a step away from the game sometimes. I grind this game like it's no one's business. So that's really important for me to kind of take a breather, uh, focus on my life and get some things in order, and then hop back to doing what we all love doing the most. Today, I do have the meta breakdown for Phantom Nightmare. I do hope this gives you some insight into what you can be dealing with this format. Uh, definitely a lot to look at, and I know that a lot of us are a little afraid of the fire decks, but I don't think that they're that crazy. I think they're good, of course, like they're solid. They win a lot right now, uh, but there's still a lot of other contenders in the meta and ways that you can go ahead and counteract these decks. They're also very technically hard to play, so it's one of those things where if you have not tested the deck out a lot, don't bring it to an event until you're ready. And then if you see people playing this at the event, just understand that the play might not be 100% perfect unless they've already been testing this for a long time. So that's something, especially at the beginning of the format, that you can kind of have as like a crutch, is that as long as you understand what your deck does really well when you go to a tournament, you're already ahead of 80% of the room. So just make sure that you're not worried when you sit down against fire, you just play the best Yu-Gi-Oh that you know how to play, and that you're able to just go through all your plays correctly and be able to win that game. If you haven't already checked out my sponsors over at Imperium Duels to Dragon Shield, Gem, Cloud, RW Hobbies and Games, Grimoire, or Chainlink, definitely go ahead and do so all down below in the description. Without further ado, let's hop back into the video after 30 days. I miss y'all. So... What to expect? We have the Fire King deck with the Snake Eyes, we have the Pure Snake Eye deck, and then we have the Rescue Snake Eye deck. So that's going to be your three Fire decks. We have Unchained Labyrinth. This is realistically the most optimal build. You can play like the standard, but I think just playing the Unchained cards really do give you a higher ceiling. Uh, you have Voiceless Voice, which I still think is tier two. I don't think that deck's very good. Uh, Cash Tira, Centurion, and then Branded. So this will be a very good picture of your format. Uh, a lot of things that we're going to have to go over today. We'll talk about what the decks are trying to do and what you can really expect as far as hand traps and board breakers. I get a lot of questions as far as would you rather play board breakers or hand traps this format. I don't really think there's a correct answer to that right now. I think that they're both very solid. I think post side, if you're playing against a fire deck, you should be using the steel cards. Like Talents, Change of Heart, Snatch Steel. It's very good to steal the fires off your opponent's board. But you also need hand traps to go ahead and mitigate some of the boards because there are a lot of very heavy choke points. One thing that I think it might be a little 50-50 right now is I'm not actually a huge fan of playing Droll. I think Droll is fine, especially if you want to side it. There's a lot of ways you can kind of over-prepare for Droll or even play through Droll. So it hasn't really become my favorite card, but I still think that you should be on cards like Ash, Imperm, Nibiru, Bell. These cards are very solid. One of the most underrated cards in this format, by and large, is Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. That card is absurd. I've talked about that in many situations, hitting the Centurion cards, hitting Sark, hitting Birth, hitting an IP, hitting an Appalooza. There's so many things you can hit with Ghost Ogre. And even if you're just running 2-bit in the sideboard, I still think that's really impactful. So just to get a better example of looking at decks a little closer, uh, we do have Centurion. Centurion's getting a lot of very new cards, which are very good, especially not being able to lose to a Vistral anymore. This is really cool with the new level 12. Uh, I think this deck is still very solid with the amount of hand traps you can play and the fact that if your opponent doesn't open optimal, then you just win the game on the spot because of Calamity. And then you can also play cards like Cross Out. So if you're afraid of cards like Super Poly, you can go draw phase, use Cross Out, call Super Poly, and then bring both of your monsters up and go right into your uh, Calamity. Uh, that's one thing that has saved me multiple times playing the Centurion deck. So just think about little interactions like that. I think they go a really long way. This is a deck that's really underrated and it's going to catch a lot of people off guard. There are a lot of hand traps going around right now, but if you play optimally with things like Cross Out, Call By, Talent, you'll be all right i like this deck a lot though uh talking about voiceless voice i think that there's two variants of this and one is way better than the other you have the branded variant which i'm not sold on 
at all. I, I don't think it's that good. Playing a lot less utility is scary, this format. If you're going to tell me to play the branded deck, or if you're going to tell me to play like just the standard voiceless with orange light, I'm choosing that all day. Orange light, ash, nib, imperm, maybe a couple bell. <laughs> I'm playing that all day. The deck itself folds to a lot, but it can still put up a nice board. It's fairly mid. It's not like the worst deck, but it's not the best deck by far. It's like tier two. Um, this is still a deck though, where either you're playing against like Mirror Jade, Low, Skull Guardian, and like a Branded in Red, or you're playing against like the Skull Guardian, the Sorry Ravis, the Low, uh, and then a lot of hand traps, right? So definitely something to keep your eye on for this format. Uh, this deck does lose pretty hard to Ash and the Bell, uh, especially if you Bell the Sephira. I'll be doing a word of hand trap soon too, so be on the lookout for that. I hope you guys are ready for that. Um, but this deck is really overhyped right now. Low is $84 a piece. If you're going to spend the 84 on low, just spend the 95 on the wanted poster. Um, but I understand that a lot of people just want to play this deck. It's just really scary to play a ritual deck that doesn't say Drytron on it. Because that's the only deck that has ever been worth playing as far as rituals besides Necroz. So it's definitely going to be interesting. It's still early on in the format. But just know that you're going to be playing against two of this variant of a deck uh and one's way less good than the other i think the hand trap variant is so much better uh but it is what it is the next thing here is going to be unchained labyrinth now this deck actually has a lot of promises format and i think this is definitely going to be like the sixth best deck but at the same time it's a contender and one that you really have to be worried about uh ash bell again is gonna be your best friends but at the same time the end boards this deck can put up and the recursion this deck has is very nice so I do think this is something that you should have on your radar, uh, being able to put up the Yama and go into the Solar Rage and have access to things like SP alongside the hand rips and whatnot with the Lovely. So definitely make sure that you're prepared for this deck. Again, Ash Bell is going to be your best friend. I know some people aren't a huge fan of Bell, but you should be on Bell. I think even right now, this might sound crazy, but like Bell over Droll. Um, I just think Bell is way too important right now. You have to play that card. Especially being able to, like, Bell a wanted poster in the draw phase and holding Ash for later on is so good. The next thing up is going to be Kesh Tira and my favorite card, D-Shifter, right? Right? Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of situations where you get D-Shiftered and you just lose the game, unfortunately. Um, that's one of the perks of playing Cash. Um, Cash still has the unfortunate bricking problem. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of different combos we see in Cash now, especially like the Arsenal Falcon uh, or the Draco Sack line and the Heat Soul. So definitely a very interesting deck. I think this deck's very strong still. Um, just the control aspect of it is really nice. And this is like what a stun deck should be in my eyes. Um, not exactly on like Floodgates, but just a lot of interactions. Um, even like Birth is a crazy card still, right? So this is a deck that you're going to have to look out for. If you are worried about Shifter, know that the format right now is like Shifter deck or Fire deck, or you're somewhere in between. But Shifter is going to hurt many decks right now. So be on the lookout for that. Make sure you're prepared. So Brighton is definitely an interesting one. This is a deck that has just seen so much play throughout the formats. I definitely think that this is strong because if you play against Cash Tira, you can branded fusion under Shifter and the Sanctifier, which is just a rough time for Cash Tira, right? Even if you're not reborning because of the Shifter, you're still giving them a really rough time because you can't target the card. Uh, so definitely very interesting. You can still get to like Scareclaw Cash, but at the same time, it's a funny situation to be in. Um, I like Branded a lot because you do have Puppet Lock still. Branded has always been really consistent. I think that it's really solid just because like... Even if you're puppet locking, or if you're just mirror jading three times because of Quem, regardless of what you're doing, the deck has a solid game plan, and it's still to this day one of the most annoying decks to play against, just because of how much recursion the deck has. So, like, if you don't kill a Despia player on turn two, they're going to kill you on turn three. So, like... That is something that you really have to think about going into your events and what kind of hand traps you're going to play uh, because this deck will be there and it will be around. The rescue deck, I think, is the third best deck out of all the fire variants, but I still think that it's worth mentioning here. I really like the rescue out of all of the different fire variants. Um, the pure one is definitely growing on me a bit more, but like contain and extinguish are so good, right? Like those cards are bonkers. Uh, but overall... 
I do think this is a deck that you have to prepare for. Um, SP going into the turbulence, and then if you go ahead and like imperm early, then they can just like prevent her out the turbulence again. So you kind of have to just make sure that you're ready to deal with a lot of back row. Um, I've seen some people play like Denko, some people are still on like Duster Lightning Storm. Whichever way you want to prepare for this, just know that like you probably are going to play against this deck again at your next event. Um, still very popular and it's gotten a lot cheaper. Obviously, like the wand and stuff isn't, but like the engine itself is very cheap. Uh, so that's very cool to see. Um, overall, this is definitely the variant that I like the most at the moment. I might like Pier a little bit more soon. But at the same point, I do like the rescue cards right now. Now, this is by and large the best variant just based off results. But like the Fire King variant isn't even my favorite. I think that this is like, in my opinion, the third best fire deck. I like Pure and Rescue before the Fire King cards. I understand that the Fire King cards are the best one at the moment. Me personally, in my play style, I can't stand breaking on Fire King cards. Um, I'd way rather have a lot more utility and like power spells but so far so good on the fire king deck uh, again ash nib bell these are gonna be your friends um i do like those cards a lot right now i think this variant loses a little harder to droll uh but at the same time the uh the fire king variant is gonna be very strong and one that you really have to look out for uh so just make sure that you're prepared going into your next event um the end boards again of all these decks don't look that scary outside of like the rescue end board but just know that there are always layers of interruption that you're gonna have to play through. I wanted to do a little like hand trap breakdown too. You're gonna see a lot of Ash, Nibiru, and Imperm, but you're not gonna see a whole lot of like Droll and Bell. They're gonna be in the sides. Sometimes you'll see them in the main deck, but like mostly in the sideboard. Um, Ash, Nibiru, and Imperm are gonna be in a lot of main boards. So just make sure that you're playing around Rock as much as you can. Uh, this card is so strong right now because no one respects it at the moment. I've played so many matches, and the amount of times that I just, like, drop a rock, and my opponent's like, oh. You know, like, it's crazy. Like, that's something that you should be prepared for at this point. But, overall, make sure that you're looking out for this, because this card's very real right now. And then, I also wanted to talk about the board breaks. Uh, I do think that the control cards are very good. Mind Control, Snatch Steel, Change of Heart, Econ, Talent, anything that you can do. To go ahead and steal away your opponent's monster um as far as i know even if you like summon a monster and then your opponent uh princesses and targets both and you econ steal their monster their monster will still get blown up by princess because it still just destroys as much as possible um so be careful with that uh, that's why i like mind control and those cards more because you can just like steal the fire off their board and like if they're on the fire king deck you force the kirin out of hand um put them in a more awkward situation um, so I like those cards a lot. That's why in my sideboard right now, I play one mind con, I play one change of heart and one snatch deal. Um, cause I think that they're just really important right now. Droplet is probably the most mid in my opinion. Um, I think that it's really good usually. And then you have a lot of cards in your spell and trap zone, especially if you have like poplar that you can just send for free. But I still am not really convinced by droplet at the moment. Super Poly, on the other hand, <laughs> that's still a card, let me tell you. Somehow, is still legal. Uh, that card should be in your deck, by the way. If you can fit it, you should play that card. That card's insane. Uh, but in the sideboard, uh, any of the control cards in your main board should be Super Poly and Talent if you can fit it. Those cards are crazy. You absolutely should. Talent should be a three of. Uh, and that's what I'm talking about. Like, It's really split between like hand traps and board breaks. You should be on a deck right now that has enough utility spots. I would say like anywhere from like 15 to 20. Ideally like 15 to 18. But like you have to have room for these things. Even if it's just like 3 Ash, 3 Imperm, 2 Nib. And then you play like 3 Talent, 3 Super Poly. Or like Super Poly and Econ or Econ and Talent. Like if you can play any combination of that, you should be fine for the format. Like no matter what deck you're playing. Um, so that's just my opinion, but this is definitely like one of the more weird, like you kind of have to play both, uh, situations. Um, I don't mind the format. I really hated whatever the format was before this when it wasn't a real format. Uh, but like right now I feel like it's pretty okay. 
Um, I don't really have many complaints outside of Shifter, but overall, I think that this is going to be the best spot for you, uh, that if you are looking for other options for your deck to go ahead and beat like a lot of the fire decks, I'd look into a lot of these options in front of you right now. If you enjoyed today's video, definitely go ahead and join the Discord, look at the Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, or my Medify page, and we're almost at 21,000 subscribers if you want to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Thank you all so much.